the Jedi of Adhuta Gita. The Song of the Free Spirit, as sung by Datatreya. Interpolation by Lao Tzu. Introduction. The Avatuta Gita is a sacred text of Hindu philosophy. Of unknown provenance, it contains the teachings of a Jedi named Datatreya. The book focuses on the nature of reality and the path to spiritual liberation. It encourages us to look beyond the physical world and recognize the underlying unity of all things in and of the Force. It stipulates that the ultimate truth is one divine conscious force manifesting as everything and everyone. This divine consciousness is eternal, unchanging, and beyond the limitations of the physical world. In particular, Datatreya emphasizes that our true identity, our inner essence, is not confined to the body or mind. It is infinite, formless, and free from all limitations. Indeed, it is the Force. By realizing our true identity, we can transcend the cycle of birth and death and recognize our inherent state of liberation. The wisdom advises us to distance ourselves from the appearance of the material world and its distractions. It encourages us to let go of attachments, desires and the illusion of individuality. Importantly, Datatreya teaches us that knowledge is not limited to books or intellectual understanding. True knowledge is experiential and arises from direct perception of the Force. He urges us to go beyond intellectual concepts and directly experience the Divine Force within ourselves and in the world, to feel it in our bones. On matters of ethics, the Avatuta Gita emphasizes the importance of selfless love and compassion. Datatreya explains that when we see the Divine Force in all beings, we naturally feel love and compassion towards them. This love and compassion are not based on piety or desire for social status, but arise from a deep understanding of the unity of all existence. In this context, the expression of this universal selfless love is both spontaneous and perfectly natural. Ultimately, the Avatuta Gita invites us to go beyond all dualities and limitations to realize our true nature as pure consciousness in the Force. It teaches us that liberation is not something to be achieved in the future but can be realized here and now by recognizing the force within ourselves and across all aspects of the manifest universe. As you will see, these themes are constantly repeated, albeit in different ways. When reading or listening to the work, allow yourself to drift in its flow and let its wisdom seep in. At the same time, don't be too critical of its obviously self-contradictory nature. The wisdom flows between perspectives, and what seem to be contradictions are merely the inevitable flaws in attempting to describe the indescribable. 
before we start, a note on illusion might be helpful, as it is a word that crops up frequently in the text. An illusion is not something that doesn't exist. An illusion is something misrepresented in our field of perception, something that we confuse with something else. The frequent example given is of a mirage in a hot, sandy desert. Our senses mistake the sand for water, but the sand still exists. We are invited to see that the sand itself is also a mirage. The true underlying nature of reality is simply the force. The sand is merely our interpretation of a particular thing the force is doing when perceived by our limited minds trapped in time and space. With that, I give you the Jedi Avadhuta Gita. May the Force be with you, always. Chapter One The recognition of oneness arises in the minds of wise people through the power of the Force. It is the antidote to all fear. How shall I greet the formless force, indivisible, auspicious and immutable, which fills the universe and also fills the individual self with its power? Indeed, no form of greeting or worship is necessary where there is unity. The reality and substance of the so-called individual self is the Force. The universe, composed of the five elements, is like the desert mirage we mistake for water. Whom shall we respect, we who are indeed one and taintless? All is truly the one absolute force. Distinction and non-distinction do not exist. How can I ask whether it exists or does not exist? I am filled with wonder. The essence and the whole of the path to liberation is this knowledge this supreme knowledge. We are by nature the formless, all-pervasive force. There is no doubt that we are that force which is the self of all, pure, indivisible like the sky, naturally stainless. We indeed are immutable and infinite, of the form of pure awareness. We do not know how, or in relation to whom, joy and sorrow exist. We have no mental activity, good or bad. We have no bodily function, good or bad. We have no verbal action, good or bad. We are the nectar of knowledge, beyond the reach of the senses, pure. Mind is free and boundless like space. Mind is all pervading. Mind is all. Yet mind is not the highest truth. The force is beyond the mind. We, the only one, are all this, beyond space and differentiation. 
how can we question whether the force is visible or hidden? We are the force. Why do you not realize that you are the one force, the same in all, indestructible and undying? You are ever exalted and indivisible. Why does the passage of time concern you so? Know the force always to be everywhere, one and uninterrupted. We are both contemplators and the highest object of contemplation. Why do you try and divide the indivisible? You are not born, nor do you die. At no time do you have a body. The scripture declares in many different ways the well-known dictum, all is the force. You are eternal bliss, pervading everywhere, within and without. Why do you then wander here and there like a lost spirit. Union and separation exist in regard neither to you nor to us. There is no you, no us, nor is there this universe. All is truly the force. Truly, you do not belong to that which is composed of the five objects of sense – sound, sight, taste, smell or touch. Nor does that belong to you. You indeed are the supreme reality of the Force. Why then do you suffer? For you there is no birth or death. For you there is no mind, for you there is no bondage or liberation, no good or evil. Why do you shed tears, my child? We have neither name nor form. O oh mind, why do you wander about bewildered like a lost spirit? Behold the indivisible force. Give up your desire and be content. Truly, you are truth, free from all change, the unshaken one, the abode of emancipation. Do you belong neither passions nor the want of passions. Then why do you grieve, overcome with desires? All the scriptures say that the force is without attributes, pure, immutable, bodiless and existing equally everywhere. Know us to be that. Know that which has form to be false, that which is formless to be eternal. Through the embodiment of this truth, there is no longer rebirth into the world of suffering. Jedi know that reality in the Force is one only and the same. Through the renunciation of attachment, the mind, which was one and many, ceases to exist. If the mind does not exist, how can there be enlightenment? If the mind does exist, how can there be enlightenment? If the mind both is and is not, how can there be enlightenment? If all is one in the Force, 
how can there be individual enlightenment? You are the unchanging force, disembodied, unborn and immutable. How can you say you know this, or you know this not, about the force? By such concepts as that art thou, our identity is affirmed. However, the scriptures say only, not this, not this. The phenomenal world is not the fundamental reality. As the self is filled by the force, so is all the manifest universe filled by you. There is no separate thought, thinker or organ of thinking. Why does your mind think so relentlessly? We do not know the force, so how shall we speak of it? We do not know the force, so how shall I worship it? If we are the force, which is the most fundamental reality manifested as space and time, how then shall we speak of it or worship it? We are not mere matter trapped in space and time, but an unchangeable principle beyond the reach of imagination that we call the force. We are free from all bondage and we do not bind others. As the eye cannot see the eye, the eye cannot know the eye. There is no manifestation which is inherently unlimited. There is no manifestation which is of the true nature of reality. There is only the supreme force. There is neither bondage nor freedom in it. You are the homogeneous reality of the force. You are pure, bodiless, birthless and imperishable. Why then do you have any delusions about your identity in the force? Again, why are you so deluded? When the pot is broken, the space within it is absorbed in infinite space and becomes undifferentiated. When the mind becomes pure, we do not perceive any difference between the mind and the force. Know yourself to be that force which is everything and everywhere at all times. The one which is eternal, steady, the all, the non-existent and the existent. Have no doubt. There are no sacred texts, no different worlds, no different gods, and no different religions. There are certainly no castes, no stages in life, no family, and no birth. There is neither the path of darkness nor the path of light. There is only the highest truth, the force. If you are free of judgment and have constant, unobstructed consciousness of the force in all, if you are one and fulfilled, how can you think of yourself as directly perceptible by the senses or beyond the range of the senses? In the highest state of realization, sense perception is no longer distinguishable from spiritual intuition. Some seek non-duality, 
others duality. They do not know the truth, which is the same at all times and everywhere, which is devoid of both duality and non-duality. How can the Jedi describe the Force, which is beyond mind and words, which is devoid of white and other colours, of sound and other qualities? When all these qualities appear to you as false, when the body and other objects appear to you like space, then you truly know the Force. Then for you, there is no I and Thou. Even our natural selves appear to us as indistinct from the Force. They are one and like space. How can there be a contemplator distinct from the contemplated? What we do, what we eat, what we sacrifice, and what we give, none of these are ours in the least. We are pure, unborn, and undecaying. Know all this universe to be formless. Know all this universe to be without change. Know all this universe to be our perception of the Force. Know all this universe to be the nature of the Force. You are truly the Force. There is no doubt about it. Otherwise, what do we know? Why do you consider the Force, which is perceptible to itself, to be imperceptible? My child, how can there be illusion and reality, shadow and substance? All this is one force. All this is of the nature of the force and without taint. We are free in the beginning, in the middle and in the end. We are never bound. This is our sure knowledge that we are naturally spotless and pure. The whole universe, beginning with the principle of the cosmic force, is not in the least manifest to us. All is indeed the force alone. How can there be any existence of social status or stage of life for us. We know that all, in every way, is the one indivisible force which is self-sustained and full, while the phenomenal world is but an illusion. We are neither animal, nor man, nor woman, Neither are we knowledge nor ignorance. How do we then consider ourselves to be full of bliss or suffering? The self certainly does not become pure through the practice of yoga. It certainly is not purified by the destruction of the mind. It is certainly not made pure by the instructions of a teacher. It is itself the truth. It is itself the force. You are not a sheath of five elements, nor one without a body. All is the force alone. How can transcendence be different from consciousness? We are neither trapped nor liberated, but we are not separate from the Force. There is no distinction between the particular 
and the universal, between the individual and the whole. As water, when water has been poured into water, mixes perfectly, so individual and universe flow through each other. If indeed you are never trapped or liberated, how then can you think of yourself as with form or as formless? These categories are meaningless. We know your supreme form to be directly perceivable, like empty space. We know your lower form to be as water, perceived as a desert mirage. We have neither teacher nor instruction, specific role nor activity. Know that by nature we are pure, homogeneous, bodiless, like the void. You are pure spirit. You are without a body. Your mind is higher than the highest. You need not be ashamed to say, I am pure awareness, the supreme force. Why does the mind feel so much pain and anguish? Because it seeks the wrong identity and searches in the wrong places. Drink, my child, the supreme nectar of non-duality transcending all divisions. There is neither knowledge, nor ignorance, nor knowledge combined with ignorance. They who always have such knowledge are themselves pure knowledge. It is never otherwise. There is no need of knowledge, reasoning, time, space, instruction from a teacher, or attainment of enlightenment. We are naturally the perfect consciousness, the only reality of the force, spontaneous and steady. We were not born and will not die. We have no action good or evil. We are the force, stainless, without qualities. With this recognition, how can there be bondage or liberation for us? The force pervades all. The force is immovable, full, undivided, and has no divisions. How can it have an exterior or an interior? The whole universe shines undivided and unbroken. Oh, the universal illusion, the great delusion, the imagination of duality and non-duality. Always remember, not this not this, to be both the formless and the formed. Only the force exists, transcending difference and similarity. You have no mother, no father, no spouse, no children, no relatives, no friends. You have no life or dislikes? Why is there anguish in your mind? O oh mind, for you there is no day or night, rising or setting sun. How can the wise imagine an embodied state for the bodiless? The force is neither divided nor undivided nor has it sadness, happiness, and the like. Nor is it all 
or less than all. Know the force to be immutable. We are neither active nor passive. Neither are there any acts binding us. We are neither bodiless nor bodies. How can possession be assigned to one who has none? We are neither contaminated by passions, nor do we suffer from bodily afflictions. Know us as the force unleashed. Friend, what do you gain by talking so much? Friend, what do you gain by such intellectual wranglings? We have told you the whole truth. Thou art the force, unlimited. Wherever Jedi die, in whatever state, there they dissolve as the space of a jar dissolves into infinite space. One who dies, either at home or at a place of pilgrimage, having stripped themselves of all bodily connections, becomes the force pervading all. The Jedi consider all virtue, wealth, ambition, life, nay, even salvation, to be as illusory as a mirage. This is our certain perception. We neither perform nor emotionally engage with past action, future action, or present action. The Jedi, pure in evenness of feeling, abide content in emptiness. Having renounced all, they abandon pride and perceive the Absolute, the All, the Force, within themselves and the Universe. Where there are neither the three states of consciousness nor the fourth, their One attains the Force in the Self. How is it possible to be bound or free? where there is neither virtue nor vice. The Jedi, immersed in the sentiment of oneness and purified of all mental affectations, declare the truth that neither poetry nor scripture nor philosophy can ever wholly express the Force. There is neither void nor fullness, neither existence nor non-existence. This understanding is in accordance with our deepest intuition. Chapter 2 A teacher can appear in many guises, a child, a hedonist, impoverished, rich, educated, or ignorant, it matters not. Natural diamonds with impurities are more valuable than those manufactured without imperfection. In any case, the quality of the scholarship is irrelevant. The Jedi recognize wisdom in all its forms. Does not a boat, though devoid of beauty and vermilion paint, nevertheless still ferry passengers? The force which animates all without effort is conscious, intelligent, and tranquil. How can the all pervading force, which manifests as all phenomena, be separate? from us. We are this same force. To realize this identity, 
is to recognize immutable bliss and be free from alienation, stagnation, resentment and mortality. Thus we, unseparated, are united in communion with the Force. You are not responsible for the ignorance and turbulence of the mind. Allow thoughts to arise and dissolve like bubbles in water. Softness, hardness, sweetness and bitterness are inseparable from things that are soft, hard, sweet and bitter. In the same way, the nature of things from the subtlest sensation to the entire universe are inseparable from the Force. The Force has no name. It is subtler than the subtlest and grander than the most supreme conception. Its extent lies beyond the mind, the intellect and the senses. It being so, how can there be an I or you or this universe? That which we call the Force is unbounded. It is pure consciousness, immaculate and absolute. The Force does not move on the ground, nor is it carried by wind or covered with water. The Force pervades all of these and is not pervaded by anything. It encompasses everything within and without being eternal and impartial. Being subtle, invisible and attributed to nothing, realizing its presence takes the practice, diligence and aptitude of the Jedi. They who depend on nothing and devote themselves to disciplined practice become free from judgment there is no other way to experience full absorption in the Force. The practice is the nectar of existence. It remedies the toxicity of experience and the delusions of the mind. That which manifests can be perceived with the senses. That which is formless can only be perceived through feelings. The force is beyond existence, so is known as the innermost feeling. The seemingly external is the universe. The seemingly internal is the self. The Jedi come to know what is inside the external and the internal that which is like the sweet water inside a coconut. Move past the hard shell, through the pulp, and find the true reality within. The knowledge of external appearances is misleading. The knowledge of inner nature is wisdom but the knowledge of that which is innermost is truth. Just as the full moon is singular and complete, so consciousness in the force is like the moon. Duality is a mirage. The duality of distinctions is simply the result of our perception are not characteristic of the Force. The Jedi, who recognize this, acquire boundless patience and effortless mental strength. Whether foolish or scholarly, those who come to this recognition are freed from delusion and liberated from the ocean 
of illusion. They who are free of passion and animosity, who are disposed to do good by all beings, who have strong conviction and a firm mind, will find communion in the Force. Just as the space contained in the pot merges with the infinite space when the pot is broken, so the Jedi, on the dissolution of the body, merge into the Supreme Force. For those Jedi who wish to return, their final thought will determine the nature of their next incarnation. The destiny for those Jedi who have completed their work is to remain at one with the undifferentiated force. Words can be used to describe the actions of the Jedi, but for those who have transcended the material realm, nothing can be said. Their destiny is indescribable. Knowing this, one would never say that every Jedi has an identical path. The renunciation of duality comes eventually, of its own accord. The complete Jedi, whether they die in a sacred place or in a gutter, will not see birth again. They merge into the Force. Any Jedi at one with the Force is innate unborn, incomprehensible, and cannot be tainted. Their actions are wholly the actions of the Force. The Jedi attain to the Force, which is pure, eternal, fearless, formless, unsupported, without body, without desire, free from passion, animosity, attachment, or delusion. The Force is of inexhaustible power. The Jedi attain to the Force, which has nothing to do with sacred texts, teachers, study, holy rites, ceremony, sacrifice, secret knowledge, and the practice of devotional gestures and postures have no connection to it. The Jedi attain to the Force without need of special initiation or instruction, without sacred objects or magic. The Jedi attain to the Force from which this universe manifests, from which it is animated, and into which it will eventually dissolve, just as foam disperses in water. The Jedi attain to the Force which cannot be realized with merely intense concentration or special breathing techniques in which there is neither knowledge or ignorance, nor any sensation. The Jedi attain to the Force, which is free from any relativity, such as variety, novelty, unity, quality, greatness, smallness, breadth, or emptiness, which is devoid of measurement, equality, or disparity. The Jedi attain to the Force, whether they have perfect self-control or not whether they have withdrawn their senses or not, whether they have gone beyond activity and effort or not. The Jedi attain to the Force which is without mind, intelligence, body, senses and egoism. It is neither the subtle nor gross elements of the manifestation, nor the void of space. When injunctions cease and a Jedi attains to the Force, their mind being void of separation has neither purity nor impurity. Their contemplation witnesses the All, and what is usually impossible becomes possible. 
when neither mind nor mouth can utter anything? What use is instruction by a teacher? To the teacher who explains this, truth is everywhere and in all things. Chapter 3 How may we adore that blissful force which is all-pervading, in which there is no distinction as to form and formlessness? It is devoid of love and hatred, attachment and detachment, delusion and illusion. It is omnipresent, and the universe is its image. O oh dear friend, how shall we salute the force in us? For we are supreme bliss eternal, without separation or attributes, no colour, without cause and effect, which is impervious to superficial change, and is truly unbound bliss. The force always exists, being neither the origin nor the originator of manifest things. It always exists, being neither bright nor dim. It always exists, being neither light nor darkness. The force is the knowledge immortal, uniform and pervading all. How can we think that the desireless force desires? How can we think that the unattached force has attachments? How can we think that the immaterial force manifests? The force is the knowledge immortal, uniform and pervading all. How can we experience the force as one? How can we experience the force as manifold? How can we experience the force as transcendent and eternal? It is the knowledge immortal, uniform and pervading all. The force is neither material nor ethereal, neither moving nor static, neither with beginning nor end. It is neither this nor that. It speaks the truth and it is the truth. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. Realize all senses are ethereal, all passions are insubstantial, and realize that the force is free from impurity, bondage and even liberation. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. My child, the force may be difficult to comprehend, but it is not complex. The force may be difficult to perceive, but it is not hidden. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force is the fire that burns all karma. It is the fire that burns all suffering. It has no form. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force never errs. It is the fire that cleanses all mistakes. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. My child, the force is neither empathetic nor sympathetic, for it is all. It is neither solitary nor sociable, for it is all. It is neither conscious nor unconscious, for it is all. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. It is an illusion that the force beyond illusion appears as illusion. It is an illusion that the force beyond grief appears to grieve. It is an illusion that the force beyond greed appears greedy. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging 
and pervading all. The manifest world is nothing but the force, but the force is more. Unlimited joy and contentment are nothing but the force, but the force is more. The bondage of ignorance is nothing but the force, but the force is more. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The busyness of the universe does not affect the force. The darkness of suffering does not affect the force. The tranquility of communion with the force does not affect the force. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force is not the cause of regret or misery. The experience of the force never causes suffering. With the force, there is no guilt. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force is neither calm nor perturbed, neither thoughtful nor vacant, neither awake nor asleep, neither flowing nor stagnant. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force is neither knower nor known, beyond reason or logic, neither mind nor intellect, and beyond any description in words. How can we explain this truth to you? It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force is the supreme essence of truth devoid of either duality or non-duality. It has neither interior nor exterior. It has no past and no future. It isn't attached to anything and isn't anything. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force is the true reality, free of attachment, grief and temporary forms. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. If the force is free from the three states of waking, dreaming and sleeping, how can the fourth state of transcendence be ascribed to it? If it is free from the three tenses of time, how can any position be attributed to it? It is the supreme abode of tranquility, and supreme truth itself. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force is incapable of divisions, large or small. It is incapable of contraction or extension. It is neither blunt nor pointed. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force has no parents, spouse or children. The force is the family of all. It never dies and was never born. It is never distracted and always calm. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force is the most pure, unattainable by thought. It is the infinity of all. Though unassociated, unthinkable, and having infinite aspects, it is associated with all. It is neither indivisible nor divisible. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. If the force is one immaculate supreme truth, how can there be a God or multiple deities? How can there be any distinction between heaven and earth, nirvana or samsara? It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all.
How can we say it is not this and not that? How can we describe the indescribable? How can we represent that which is beyond all symbols? It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force is devoid of all action, yet it performs all actions. It is without attachment, yet everything is connected to it. It is without form and yet animates all. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force is beyond this show of illusory phenomena, beyond all notions of arrogance and deceit, beyond all vestiges of tyranny, beyond all notions of truth and falsehood, it is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. Though devoid of time, the force is imminent. Though devoid of internal consciousness, it is neither deaf nor dumb. Though devoid of all change, it is not separated even from impure thoughts. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force is neither the master nor the servant. It has no brethren. It has no anxiety, for it has no mind. It is devoid of all trouble, because it maintains no relations. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The world can seem like a solitary wilderness and can be filled with uncertainty. But what can we say of the force? It perpetuates unchanged, free from all strife. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force is neither lifeless nor vital. Nothing springs from it, and from it nothing springs. It is nirvana, everlasting freedom. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The force does not prosper. It is free from the eternal bondage of birth and death. It is the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. You are this force without name or form. You are indivisible and no separation do you suffer. My dear child, why then do you grieve? You are the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. My friend, why do you weep? You are never born, age or die. You are the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. My friend, why do you weep? You have neither beauty nor ugliness, nor limited time. You are the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. My friend, why do you weep? You have neither mind nor real sense, nor limited extent. You are the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. My friend, why do you weep? If you have no desire, you have no greed, no want and no attachment. You are the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. Why do you crave wealth in the manifest world? You are beyond all riches. You have no responsibility, so why crave possessions? There is nothing which is not you. You are the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. The manifestation of the illusory world is not yours or ours. The world appears as it is only to the naive mind. We are of the same essence, of the same force. You are the knowledge immortal, unchanging and pervading all. 
Indeed, you have no passion, attachment, or desire. You are the knowledge immortal and changing and pervading all. In respect of your true nature, you have no enlightenment to seek, no meditation to practice, and no thing on which to contemplate. You have no interior or exterior, no constitution, and no restriction in time. You are the knowledge immortal, unchanging, and pervading all. We have explained the ultimate and final truth of the Force. There is no you or us, no great or small, no teacher or pupil. The supreme truth of the Force is by its nature absolutely free. It is the knowledge immortal unchanging and pervading all. If apprehension of the Force is bliss itself, pervading all, there can be no other supreme truth. If apprehension of the Force is bliss itself, pervading all, how can there be any other supreme truth? If the Force is the supreme knowledge and the supreme truth, how can there be anything more than it? Know the Force to be the entire truth. It is devoid of fire and wind, earth and water, devoid of all movement and pervading all. The force is neither the form of the vacuum or the form of matter. It is neither pure nor impure. It simply is the supreme truth. Renounce the world as others experience it and then give up renunciation. The force by its nature is immaculate, immortal and immutable. Chapter 4 The force can be invoked no more than it can be avoided. Leaves and flowers cannot be offered to it, nor can songs of devotion impress it. All mindful actions are in worship with the Force. In the Force, we are free from all natural and acquired bondage, free from all inward and outward piety, and free from all notions of separation and unity. We exist altogether in the eternal freedom, untrammeled like the heavens. In this created world of illusion, we are free in the Force and beyond all ills. We notice the illusion and are not perturbed. The variety and differentiation do not concern us. We are free in the Force and beyond all ills. Neither knowledge nor ignorance concern us. If we are not the form of knowledge, how can knowledge or ignorance separate us? We are free in the force and beyond all ills. We are neither virtuous nor sinful, neither bound nor separate. The relations between things do not affect us. We are free in the force and beyond all ills. We are neither this nor that, nor anything in between. We do not distinguish between friend or enemy, and have nothing to do with good or evil. We are free in the Force, and beyond all ills. We are not devotees, nor the ones to whom devotions are offered. For us, there is neither instruction nor duty. There isn't any knowledge to gain. We are free in the Force and beyond all ills. We are neither the pervaders nor the pervaded. We are neither at rest nor flowing through time and space. We are neither empty nor full. We are free in the Force and beyond all ills. 
We are neither the captured nor the captor. For us, there is neither cause nor effect. How can we be thought of or ignored? We are free in the force and beyond all ills. We are neither the cause of difference, nor do any differences exist in us. We are neither the known nor the unknown. So how can we imagine the past or the future? We are free in the force and beyond all else. We do not have bodies, and yet we are not bodiless. We have neither mind, intellect, nor senses. We are not affected by passion or by indifference. We are free in the force and beyond all else. We are the force. This understanding is not hidden deep in scripture. It is to be found everywhere. How can we call it uniform or varied? We are free in the force and beyond all ills. We don't control perception and perception does not control us. There are no laws or rules that apply. Being such, how can we say that victory or defeat occur? We are free in the force and beyond all ills. We are formless and have no fixed identity. We have no beginning, middle or end. Dear friends, how can we be called strong or weak? We are free in the force and beyond all ills. For us there is neither life nor death, neither nectar nor poison, neither purity nor impurity. We are free in the force and beyond all ills. For us there is neither waking nor sleeping, nor special methods, neither darkness nor light, neither elation nor misery. We are free in the force and beyond all ills. Know us to be completely free. For us, there is no illusion and no reality. In that light, how can we have special methods and secret knowledge? We are free in the force and beyond all ills. Although we may concentrate consciousness in deep meditation, we are beyond all that can be considered an object in thought. How can we then speak of separation or unity? We are free in the force and beyond all ills. We are neither foolish nor wise. We are neither garrulous nor reluctant to speak. How can we believe that argument or criticism can affect us? We are free in the force and beyond all ills. We have no parents, no social status, no family and no birth nor death. How then can we speak of attachment or non-attachment? We are free in the force and beyond all ills. We are always shining. We never set or disappear. For us there is no lightness or darkness. How can we set aside specific times for special awareness of the force? We are free in the force and beyond all ills. Know us for certain to be without origin. Know us for certain to be without separation or division. Know us for certain to be untarnished. We are free in the force and beyond all ills. The wise renounce all meditation and showy acts of virtue or hostility. Oh dear, many drink the nectar of renunciation. We are free in the force and beyond all ills. The Jedi purged of all evil desires and immersed in the force, always declare the truth 
that no one can succeed in knowing the Force through intellect, scripture, or logic. It can only be felt. Chapter 5 When recited, the sound OM is indicative of the Force and hence pervades the universe. There is no differentiation in it between a higher or lower reality. It does not interact with worldly pleasure or pain. It being so, how can a two-letter word be pronounced? How can the word non-duality connote non-duality? You are the force pronounced in the scriptures as thou art that. You are devoid of all obstructions and are truly one with all in the force. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force being all one is devoid of height or depth. It being all one is devoid of exterior and interior. It being all one cannot be counted. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is beyond all conception and beyond all conceived. It is beyond all cause and effect. It cannot be summarized in words and concepts. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is beyond the comprehension of knowledge. It is beyond the comprehension of space. It is beyond the sweep of time. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is neither the pot nor the space contained within it. It is not the individual body or an individual spirit. It is neither the cause nor the effect. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? Opening to the force brings emancipation for eternity. It has no qualities. It is not long or short, rounded or angular. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is neither full nor void. It is neither pure nor tarnished. It cannot be a part and is beyond the whole. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? To the force, the concepts of unity and separateness do not apply. The idea of union of parts does not exist. It makes no distinction between friend or foe. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is neither pupil nor teacher. It pervades the animate and inanimate. It is the source of all emancipation. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is without form, and yet it is not formless. It does not separate, and yet manifests as all. It has no manifestation or dissolution. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force does not distinguish between the good and the bad. It does not know of birth and death. It is pure and immaculate. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force has no emotional attachments and does not dwell in thought. It neither desires nor ignores. It is truly the greatest knowledge and the finest emancipation. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is the truth, the eternal truth. It does not discern 
between union and separation. It does not recognize happiness and sadness. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force has no particular home. To it, everything is familiar, being beyond contact or separation. It contains nothing, and yet everything is contained in it. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The manifest universe, fluctuating in that which does not fluctuate, an objectification of that which cannot be conceived is an illusion. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? Truly, all life is eternal life. All life is pure and undefiled. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? We cannot know whether the force discriminates or not, whether it changes or not. It is the eternal consciousness of which we are all one. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? There is no bondage or liberation, no virtue or vice, no matter or vacuum. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? If the force has no qualities, no colour or colourlessness, if it does not distinguish between cause and effect, if it perceives no difference between unity and separation, then the force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force dwells in all hearts and is omnipresent. It abides in all hearts, forming one immutable existence. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is truly everywhere, ever existing and all pervading. It underlies all and is unshakable. It penetrates and interpenetrates. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is unbounded and nothing can bind it. It exhibits no union or separation. It cannot be captured in discussion or through criticism. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is not bound in time or restricted to the cycles of existence. It cannot be scorched with fire. It is truth, pure and simple. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is neither material nor ethereal. It does not sleep or dream or lie awake. It is surely beyond all words, speech or description. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is like the heavens, pure, immense and uniform. It is not separate from all that is, for it is universally one. It is the same everywhere, being beyond reality, imagination and all change. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is indifferent to virtue or vice, to material or spiritual elation, and to passion and apathy. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force does not distinguish between pleasure and pain and transcends the human experience of pain and joy. It is neither teacher nor pupil. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is not the reality we experience, and yet is not illusory. The change and dynamism we perceive do not affect it. It is beyond notions of uniformity and variation. 
it remains unaffected by ritual and sacred ceremony. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? The force is the ground of being, the quintessence of all that exists. It expresses its true nature through self-actualization. In this sense, all perceptions are superficial and illusory. The force being all one, why do you grieve, my friend? Indeed, all concepts are illusory, be they in relation to the spiritual realms or to the manifest universe. So proclaim many sacred texts. If the force is eternal and infinite, permeating all, why do you grieve, my friend? For the Jedi, who has been purged of all evil desires and consumed in the oneness of the force, declares the truth that one can never truly know the expansive oneness of the force, which no sacred text nor any logical definition can ever accurately describe. Chapter 6 The sacred texts repeat the truth that all individual objects are illusory, including ourselves. If the force is one indivisible, comprehensive absolute, how can there be any subject or object for comparison? The force is beyond all comparison and distinction. It is beyond the notions of cause and causelessness. If immersion in the force is eternal universal bliss, how can the force be an object of worship or responsive to austerities? Mind perpetually penetrates all. It is without dimension. Large and small mind is external universal bliss. But the force is beyond all mind and speech. The force is both day and night and cannot be subject to the progress of time. It cares not for the rising and setting of the sun. If the force is the indivisible, all comprehensive absolute, how can there be sun, moon, or fire. The force is beyond all emotion, feeling, desire and indifference. It transcends action and apathy. If the force is all an eternal bliss, how can we conceive of an exterior or an interior? The force is beyond reality and illusion alike, beyond fullness and emptiness alike. If the force is all an eternal bliss, how can the ideas of first or last apply to it? The force is devoid of separation and unity, and devoid of the concept of knower and known. If the force is all an eternal bliss, how can any state of consciousness be applied to it? All that is taught and all that is unknown are false alike. All that is known and that which is unknowable are equally false. If the force is all an unceasing bliss, how can it be contained in the intellect, the mind, or truly perceived? Neither the sky nor the atmosphere is real. Neither the earth nor fire is real. If the force is all an unending bliss, how can there be clouds or moisture contained in it? If the force is beyond the manifest universe, if it extends beyond the imaginary gods, if it is all an unceasing bliss, how can our discrimination between good and evil pertain to it? The force is beyond life and death, beyond action and rest. If it is an unbroken perennial felicity, how can one attribute motion or stasis to it? 
The force does not distinguish between matter and spirit. In it, there is no distinction between cause and effect. If the force is all one and an unbroken perennial bliss, how can one know it is the force? The force is not affected by maturity or old age. If it is all one unbroken perpetual bliss, how can old age, youthfulness or infancy be attributed to it? The force truly transcends all stages of life and social status. It is neither agent nor action. If it is all one unbroken perpetual bliss, how can right or wrong be attributed to it? The devourer and the devoured are illusions. The manifester and the manifested are one. If the force is all one unbroken perpetual bliss, how can destruction or permanence be attributed to it? In the force, the concepts of man, woman, eunuch and beast have no meaning. If it is one eternal universal bliss, how can pleasure or pain affect it? If the force is beyond all suffering and grief, if it is devoid of doubt and anxiety, if it is all one perpetual bliss, how can there be a difference between attachment and detachment? Chapter 7 The true Jedi, immersed in oneness, who cares not for fine clothes and is indifferent to virtue or vice, repairs to a deserted place and simply sits there by themselves. The true Jedi, baptised by the purity of the one eternal truth of the Force, is beyond conceivable and inconceivable goals and devoid of contact and separation alike. They have nothing to do with discussion and debate. Such Jedi are free from all bonds of hope, devoid of all acts of exterior purity and bereft of all. They are wedded simply to the pure and immaculate reality of the Force. Where do the ideas of form and formlessness, of passion and apathy, come from? The Force is the pure, immutable, naturally formless reality without boundary. From this perspective, how can one acquire knowledge or understand form or formlessness? How can we perceive that which is beyond perception? The Force is eternally boundless. It is the truth, pure and undefiled. It is bereft of all bondage and liberation. How can there be any separation in it? The one eternal reality of the Force exists everywhere. How can we speak of union or disharmony? It is the highest conception, existing eternally, everywhere. How can there be any notion of gain or loss in it? The Force is the one pure, universal reality. It is eternally immaculate and omnipresent. How can separation or merger, colour or variety be true in regard to it? The Jedi who is without union or fragmentation and who experiences without passion or apathy gradually becomes the spontaneous peace beyond the mind. A Jedi grasping knowledge and experiences wedded to duality and unity will not become the Force. How can such a Jedi be naturally dispassionate and witness the pure, undefiled experience of oneness in the Force? 
The force encompasses all in its infinity, beyond notions of divisibility and abstraction, attachment and detachment. How can there be any difference between truth and falsehood in it? Forever divested of worldly separation, for the Jedi, the many become one. For them, there is no life and death, no meditation or contemplation. They lie beyond all elements of truth. The universe of appearances is like a magical mirage in a sandy desert. Only bliss, universal and unbroken, exists. The Force is beyond all, beyond all activities, including religious ceremony and liberation. How do the Jedi then associate it with feelings of love and detachment? For the Jedi, who has been purged of all evil desires and consumed in the oneness of the Force, declares the truth that one can never truly know the expansive oneness of the Force, which no sacred text nor any logical definition can ever accurately describe. Chapter 8 Although we know the Force is omnipresent, to use this word does it no justice. Although we know the Force is beyond thought, to think of it implies the Force is not so. Although we know the Force is beyond speech, prayers and chanting, discussion can make it seem like it can be understood. Forgive us these three sins. One who is dispassionate, who can control their urges, who is gentle, pure and poor, who does not partake in excess and is desireless, tranquil and steady, and who has sought shelter in the Force, is a Jedi. One who is detached from bodily urges, who is of clear mind sober, courageous, unostentatious, capable, courteous, compassionate and friendly, is a Jedi. The Jedi is kind-hearted, forbearing, truthful, free in spirit, hostile to none and treats all as equals. The characteristics of the Jedi should be recognisable by any devotee across the social hierarchy, by the religious academics, the clergy and the fundamentalists. This book was written by the Jedi Dattatreya, whomever applies its wisdom will transcend life and death, being at one with the Force. May the Force be with you, always. <laughs>